Good afternoon, good morning, good night, wherever you are, hello. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show. And I, as always, am so delighted to have you here with us today. Um, you know, each and every week, we love to explore uh, different opportunities for us all to learn, grow, share, connect, understand uh, the meaning of life, opportunities, growth, our freedom. And today is going to be, again, one of those shows. And before we get started with that part with our special guest, I want to introduce Amnon. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine. You doing We've good? Been huh? okay so far. So far, so good. I'm yeah. I'm raring to go for whatever comes my way. <laughs> and you? I'm just fine. Good. 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 Yeah, it's been a great week so far, and I had a wonderful weekend with my grandson, so I'm I'm really good to go. So I'm going to read to you uh, about my guests because, and I don't always read all these things, but it's so interesting and it's so much going to be part of our show that I want to do that. And, you know, a lot of the times people will turn around and say to you, do you have a book inside of you? Do you have a story to tell? Well, today we're going to talk about the documentary inside of you. Do you have a story to tell? Because today, sit back and listen, because you're going to learn something about telling stories. And if you know me, which many of you do, you know that I have been about stories for years and years and years and years and years. And I believe that stories are what will connect us. Stories um, help us feel, obviously, like we're not alone. It shows what's going on beneath the surface that we cannot put, a, put words to. And so much more, so much more. Stories is really what's, it's, it's, they're so healing. So I want to read to you today about my guest. And I am fascinated by his story and who he is. So our guest is Andy Abrams Wilson, and he's the founder and president of Open Eye Pictures. Andy serves as the company executive director and senior producer, a multi-award winning, Emmy-nominated producer and director of creative nonfiction films. Andy received a BA in cultural anthropology from Northwestern University and a master's in visual anthropology from the University of Southern California, where he also studied at uh, USC School of Cinema. His approach emphasizes the moving image as a way to bridge disparate parts, people, and ideas. And I think that's really, really cool. And I spent some time on their website last night, and I suggest everybody at some point you go and you do that. What you will see is extraordinary. You know, I've been interested in documentaries for a long time, and I've and I've watched and I've watched trailers on different um, websites, and there's something about these trailers that, from the second you turn them on, there is no question you are going to be captivated. There's no question, for the least bit, that you're going to be uh, moved. No question. So the art of opening eyes, which I think is very cool, open eye production is award-winning production company specializing in creative nonfiction media. They focus on the lens and unrecognizable stories, forging connection between desperate parts, operating ideas, and minds to new possibilities. I think it's just so interesting. And um, one of the, the pieces that I saw last night grabbed me like immediately, and there was no words. And that's pretty cool. So with that, I want to welcome Andy. Andy, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to be here. It's nice to have you here. So um, what did I leave out about you currently? Uh, a whole lot, but okay. I think we've got a lot of time to talk about it. So yeah. I'm happy to get started. All right, terrific. So you have, I know that you've done two specific documentaries about Lyme disease and several right about AIDS, um, about dance. So one of my questions, my first question is, how do you decide what your topic is going to be? I mean, do you listen to the news? Do you watch the newspaper? You, do you just get an inkling? Do you know people? I mean, what's the way you, you first decide what you're going to do? Yeah. Well, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of filmmakers say this, and, and I will also say this, and the same thing, which is that we don't choose our subjects, the subjects choose us, so the, the films choose us, that it's, it's sort of like you can't not make the film. It really arises from um, uh, a question, from 
um, an interest, from uh, an attempt to try to understand something that's un not understandable, um, or to get to the bottom of something. But but really, it's it, you know when when you're a, a an independent filmmaker and there's not a lot of support, you know that y it's only going to be your soul which is going to pull you through. Um, and so it has to be a deep sort of yearning um, to approach the topic that you are. And so it's no different for me. That's really what it is. Um, in, in some cases, a film might be commissioned, but that's a, a, whole, different, a whole different thing. Um, it's got to be interest. Interest, um, curiosity, compassion. So when you say you don't have a lot of support, uh, I'm, I'm guessing what you mean, and then you can clarify that for me a bit more, is that some of the subjects you choose, somebody else might go, what? Why would that? I mean, I can't even see the connection, so why would I support that until you actually do it? Like the one that we talked about, um, the one with the dance that I just love so much. Uh, what was it called? Going Home? Uh, returning, returning Home. home. It, this was extraordinary to me, because there was no words, and it was just a dancer dressed up, in a way that was so so much more beyond earthy than I could have imagined and from the moment I saw this person on the screen I got the connection but had you told me about this up front I might not have understood until I actually saw it so would you say that the, is, is that why you don't necessarily get the support is it because no, the subject okay no. tell me why no because um, uh, independent documentary filmmaking is not something that uh, that there is a large market for, and that there is a, a paying a large paying um, market for. That's what I'm talking about. So it's it's really about our, our cultural um, the cultural marketplace than, than anything else. Um, it's you know you won't find an investor for a documentary film for the most part. It's not like the Hollywood industry for narrative films. So it's, it's really the genre that I'm talking about, less than the, the topic itself. So when you do these, unless they're commissioned and somebody's paying you to do them, but when you do them on your own or with your staff, uh, uh, do you make money from these? I mean, how do you make money? Well, we have to in order to, to, uh, <laughs> to right. run a business, yes. Um, our business, Open Eye Pictures, is a nonprofit, but what that means is that all the proceeds um, from our work needs to go back into the work, into our mission. Um, so yes, we have to we have to make a profit in order to pay ourselves, um, and and like I said, to continue the work that we do. But many documentary filmmakers um, don't. You know, all films do not make do not turn a profit. Um, and that's why you see a lot of documentary films that are on uh, platforms like Kickstarter trying to raise money um, without, without the promise of a return. So like I said, investors, it's not something investors are interested in. It's about, uh, it's about uh, social issues and social value and ultimately meaning and education. Right. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I've I'm one of those people, I think, that I have a, a documentary inside of myself, and it's been one that's been uh, talking to me for years. Are you familiar with Well, a, you can yeah. make it. That's, that's what I want to say, because, uh, you know, it's, it's, I hear from people all the time, oh, I have this idea, why don't you do this? Well, like I said before, the only way it's going to get done is if, if, is if it comes from you, is if it's your baby that needs to be born. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I say to people when they come to me with ideas, I say, you got the money? Let's talk. Um, but, um, uh, you know, otherwise, um, it's, it's, you know, you, 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 only you are going to be able to put the, the time and the effort into it. Will, it. will it be your baby? And if it's not your baby, it's much harder to do the work that's necessary to bring it to completion. So... I don't know if you're at liberty to say, but when somebody commissions you, is there a range of, of, of cost for you? I mean, is there a range of what a documentary will cost or a short film or whatever the difference is? Is there oh, a range? I, you know, these days everybody's a filmmaker, you know, mm -hmm. since the, the YouTube era, everybody's a filmmaker. So 
It's it's hard to say. I mean, you could make a you could make a film for a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. um, and and you can make a a film for over a million dollars. So uh, I, it's a really yeah. tough one to, sure. to answer. And how long are your films, generally speaking? Uh, they're all different lengths. I've done yeah. a lot of a lot of short shorter films, um, uh, thirty to forty five minutes. Um, I like that length. I like. Uh, uh, um, I think it gives you enough time to get into an issue and to a character and um, not uh, um, dwell. Um, but most most documentaries are at least an hour. PBS the PBS hour is fifty six minutes, so you'll see a lot of films that length. Uh, feature films are usually over seventy minutes, um, so you'll find feature documentaries that are. Um, 70 plus minutes. Mm -hmm. My film Under Our Skin was 104 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it really varies. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I loved what you said about um, that the story has to, has to speak to you, has to, I mean, get to you. Because I, I mean, I really think that when you live your life, you know, you don't set out to say, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. All of a sudden, just something, there's something, somebody said something, something grabbed your attention and you become so passionate about it that you, you know, you have to speak it somehow. So I, I loved what you said. I yeah, it's a said. method of inquiry, mm -hmm. you know, and how wonderful is that, that your work can be about inquiring into something that you're interested in, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I think that's, it's, that's why it's such a great job, because it's not really work in a lot of ways. It's just, it's just pursuing our interests. and. Um, trying to uncover, uh, I'll say, truth, um, trying to uh, share that truth, and um, trying to connect people. You used the word uh, healing earlier, and that, that stories are, are healing, and I think the reason they're healing, at least in, in the way I look at it, in my profession, it's not just the story is, is, is healing, but it's the, it's the making of that story and the telling of that story. And it's precisely healing because, because it's connecting. The making of the, of the story is connecting the, uh, the subject of the documentary um, to, in, in my case, myself, if I'm doing the interviewing, if I'm doing the witnessing. And it's also healing because then you're bringing that film to a larger audience um, and a larger witnessing. So it's connecting. It's all about connection. Connection is happening everywhere and telling stories we're connecting and that's right. why it's healing. Right, right. Yeah, you, know, you know, I often will say, some, you know, when we have certain guests on our show that we, we like to share a tool, a strategy, a technique. You know, somebody did something, somebody wants to do something. Sometimes it's healing just for the guest to be able to share their story. You know, and I mean, it, it all matters so much. Yes, absolutely. It's the it is that 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 act of 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 witnessing and being witnessed that that can be incredibly mm -hmm. healing, especially for people who haven't had their stories told, you know. And um, in in the case of of my film Under Our Skin, which is about the hidden epidemic of Lyme disease, and although it's a, hid, a hidden epidemic, it's it's really one of the largest epidemics in the country right now. Um, it's larger than breast cancer and HIV combined. Um, these people have fallen through the cracks and their stories haven't been told and they haven't been taken seriously. So, so that act of witnessing becomes very palpable and very healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could listen to you talk about this all day long. So if I don't, re if I don't come with a question at you right away, it's, it's uh, honestly, I usually can, but I'm thinking so much about what you're saying because you're touching upon things that I'm so very interested in in how we tell these stories and all about these stories and when you when you use the word unrecognized stories in your um, in the description here I mean uh -huh. I, I think that's so important because so many people don't have a voice or what you would never focus on this this thing about uh, murder in uh, Mesopotamia Mesopotamia yeah uh -huh. I mean when I watched that last night and it was just a little piece just the woman in there that just kept saying uh, something I, I can't remember, uh, just like one word, uh-huh, yeah, I mean, she just kept agreeing and not, that was, that in itself was so powerful. Mm -hmm. 
And she didn't say much. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you said the word unrecognized stories, and I think that goes back to the healing, too. The healing place when there's a spark of recognition, a spark, like a, a sort of jump out of our common uh, reality um, to see something different, to hear something different. Um, and, you know, that, that to me is what, what gives me the meaning because it's also happening. Um, it's not just happening to the audience for the audience. It's not just happening for the subject that's being filmed, but it's also happening for me. I, so my work is healing for me as well. It's bringing new insights to me. It's bringing me closer to other people's human experience and human condition. Um, and it's um, giving me uh, a, a, a new, um, uh, new, new, new knowledge and, and, um, and really, ultimately, I think, compassion and humility before these, these stories that are both foreign and um, ultimately um, common and, um, and human. So, um, so again, you know, getting back to this being a, a, a difficult field in terms of not having a broad cultural um, recognition or support for it, um, it can be also very tremendously satisfying. Right, and that's really and truly, I mean, what you were you were like speaking my story just by doing this show. I mean, you know, I mean, I bring right. people here for right. people to see and hear. When would anybody else, in in our, our, the people that we touch, have an opportunity to listen to you, like this? Not too often. I mean, I'm. You might do shows, and you might get an opportunity to be interviewed with things, but for the people to for people to actually hear your heart and soul like this. The people that would, I mean, maybe never even heard of some of the things that you've done or other people have done, but they get such um, a, a sense of, this world's not such a bad place to live in. Look at what people are doing. Look at what people are up to. That's what I think is another extraordinary thing. I mean, we, last week we had um, these two really cool people from a camp in Seattle, Washington, somewhere called Camp Ten Trees. And it's a camp for gay and lesbian, uh, trans teenagers, or teenagers that are from those families. Now, I never heard of that camp before. It wouldn't. It's ne it's not cross my um, my path on a day to day basis. But what an education I got about those kids. That is a great story about these kids who uh, are part of this community, whose families are part of this community, kids who don't feel any gender who feel like they are no gender. They're just a person. They're a they, they're a them. What an amazing uh, concept. And that's what we bring here. I feel the same way you do. I'm like educated every day by the people that I get to talk to, that I get to take a little bit of them out in the world with me to do something, you know, to, to do something else. So I love that. So what can I tell you about my work? What can I tell well, I you? I want to know what you're doing currently also. I know that you you're doing a lot of things. Yeah, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, currently I'm taking a little hiatus <laughs> or I hope to be I hope to be taking a little hiatus very soon. Um, I'm going to Australia for a personal spiritual retreat is what I'm going to be doing very soon. And I'm excited about that because it's been about 10 years where it's been one project after another nonstop. And the, the film that we just finished is called Emergence. It's the part two of Under Our Skin, um, which is the Lyme disease film. Um, we just released that on DVD in August, and it's um, doing very well. Uh, um, continuing to push the envelope on the issue and to uncover the, uh, the truth. Um, and it's called Emergence partly because the truth is emerging about the epidemic. Um, people's lives we're also showing that people can uh, emerge or re-emerge into health, back into health after being very, very sick. Um, and, and really just to highlight what, what is more and more an emerging epidemic that we're going to have to pay attention to. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you're doing for self-care because when you do the work you're doing, you see things, some of it has to be very hurtful and emotional and all of that stuff. So, so 
you're taking some time off, is that part of your self-care? That's a good word for it, yes, yeah. Right. And yeah. so you'll be gone, and so are you going away for, for, for a vacation, or is there work I'm involved? I'm going away for, I mean, I don't know whether to call it a vacation, it's a retreat, it's a spiritual retreat. Uh -huh. A lot of my time has been spent with a uh, outward focus, the outward gaze, looking out as a filmmaker, photographer, anthropologist, and um, uh, part of that self-care, I think, is also turning turning the lens inward. Um, and so that's what I what I hope to be doing, and um, uh, and give myself a little break in that way, It'll give myself a little healing as well. Yeah. And, you know, was, when I was listening to you, I was thinking, you know, I know I can tell you're an extraordinary listener for the work that you do because it's not, there are no words for some of the information, there are no words for the information that comes to you. You have to listen for these topics. I mean, whether it's the caretaker or any of caregiver, any of these things that are speaking out to you, you're, li you're listening. And I would be very excited to know what will come from this next part um, of your work once you go in, once you go inward because I would imagine you've gone inward before somehow. Yes, I, yeah, I think yes, absolutely. But it, it is a, it's just a it's a break and um, it's another approach. Let's mm -hmm. just call it that. So how long will you be gone? Oh, just about three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. Well, that's going to be really really interesting. I'd love to hear about about that because I think. It's going to be interesting to see what you think of next. You know, when I um, listened to some of these and I was thinking, hmm, what would he say about Ebola? I mean, there's so much going on with that, and you take these two stories, you have Lyme disease, and people aren't focusing on that as much as they are this. So you must have something to say about that, I well, would imagine. Well, you know, I mean, you know, we don't want to, I certainly don't want to underestimate Ebola and, and um it's you know obviously very scary and it's impacting a lot of people and um, so in no way do I want to do I want to minimize that um, but yes um, Ebola is a zoonotic disease which means it's a disease that can jump from animals to humans um, and just like Lyme disease Lyme disease is a zoonotic disease and it's the it's the most prevalent zoonotic disease in the United States and in, elsewhere in the world too, but certainly in the United States. Um, and like I said before, it's more prevalent than HIV and breast cancer combined. Um, it's also the most prevalent vector-borne disease, meaning that, um, that uh, vectors carry it. Um, so it's, it's very serious and it's, it's, um, it's, it's destroying people's lives, qualities of lives. It's, killing people. It's commonly misdiagnosed, if it's diagnosed at all, um, as uh, conditions such as MS, ALS, uh, Parkinson's disease, all these neurodegenerative diseases for which we don't have cures or known causes, um, yeah, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, these are all differential diagnoses. They're all conditions for which we don't know what's causing them. And Lyme disease, in many cases, is sort of the spearhead, is, is what's causing it. And so people are, are, because of the lack of education and awareness, people are not getting diagnosed and not getting treated. Mm -hmm. And it's a real drain, not just in terms of uh, people's personal lives, um, family lives, but also our economy. Um, mm -hmm. People can't work for years and years and years. Well, you, you know, know, and I, it's and a tragedy it's, to me. The reason I got into this in the first place was a friend of mine here in California was very, very sick, and she was diagnosed with MS, and then she was diagnosed with ALS, which is basically a death sentence. And she kept looking, and um, she then got a Lyme disease diagnosis, and uh, slowly uh, a, a road back to health and. So I wonder what would have happened to her if she stuck with that ALS diagnosis, which is a dead-end diagnosis. Um, you know, she might not be here. She might not be here if she didn't get that treatment. So right. that's how serious this is. Right, and I, and I would like to think that even, um, let's say, even the Ebola or anything 
any of these stories draws attention to the Lyme story or to the ALS stories. I mean, it seems all, I mean, somebody else the other day was talking about their son and um, a disease that they had, and all of these stories seem to be helping to put a focus on the rest of the stories. So however the stories come to focus, I think is, is really important. And like you said earlier, you have this personal experience being drawn to you with your friend, and that helps get out a big part of this story. Because we, and people, people, you know, some people can read about it, some people are experiencing it, some people want to see it, just like with your video, with your uh, movies, they get to have an experience by watching it that they may not have had before, to to associate with the magnitude of of the disease, and yeah, yeah. well, you don't, you don't, you know, right, right, um, with the disease meaning Lyme disease, yes, Is that what you're talking yes, about? yes, yeah. definitely. Well, I think we're going to be hearing more and more about it, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the first film under our skin did a lot to bring to bring about awareness for the issue since it came out in 2008. It, it did get a lot of attention at the time. It was um, uh, a semi-finalist for the Oscars. It had a limited theatrical run. It was on PBS. Um, it was on uh, Netflix and still is on Amazon. So a lot of people saw that film and, and it did open eyes. Um, and uh, I guess partly it's, that's, sort of, that's become a mission of mine to continue um, to tell that story and uh, impact change. Now, I didn't go into this as, a, uh, as an apologist or as an advocate of a certain point of view. Um, I went into it with a curiosity, with a, with a compassion for the people who I saw suffering, but a curiosity for sort of under, un, uncovering what was going on. And so it's the, it's the, uh, the data itself the stories, it's the stories themselves that really has cemented in me this, this uh, real passion um, to, to help save lives, ultimately. Well, my, I, my life would not be touched by Lyme unless there was somebody like me. I pray somebody like you was somebody that I know had Lyme. I, I, I probably wouldn't have kind of connected unless it's part of my life, and so I'm very grateful for you bringing things like that up into the, you know, into right. you know, for the rest of us to see it. Uh, Chris is asking how your being, your background in being an anthropologist has helped you be a filmmaker, and how has it affected your being a filmmaker? Well, that's a great question. Um, my background is not just as an anthropologist, but as a visual anthropologist. So that's what I have a, uh, a graduate degree in, in visual anthropology which is a sort of hybrid of, of film and anthropology. So it's telling stories um, through the visual media about cultures and um, uh, about cultural issues, let's say. So it's, it's, although I don't sort of bill myself as an anthropologist, um, it's really deeply ingrained in me in terms of uh, the importance of getting to know your subject that you don't just drop in and drop out, but that familiarity is so important. Uh, the idea of particip particip participatory observation mm -hmm. is, is uh, so important within anthropology, that, that you, you, you go into the world of the other. Um, so that's one thing. Um, this idea of reciprocity, that you don't just go into the world of the other and take from it, but that, that there's a sharing. Um, a reciprocity. Uh, so that's important too, that I'm giving back. And I like to think that what I'm giving um, in part is really the witnessing, is the act of witnessing. And um, I, as we talked about before, that's, that's very, um, that is very healing. Um, and I think just also just sort of like an openness to the difference, uh, to the really vast difference of humanity and um, cultures uh, and an understanding that our way is not the only way. Um, I think all of those things have really shaped the way I look at what I do and, and in some ways also have chosen what I've done. Yep, our, there is no one way of doing anything, is there? I love the idea of the 
observing and, and living it while you're doing it. I would imagine, and I'm just guessing because I haven't made a film, but in order to capture that, that, that moment, that essence, you would have to do that. Yeah, it's tricky. I mean, we could have a whole other show on what that means to capture mm -hmm. uh, the idea of capturing essence. Um, because ultimately I don't think essence can be captured. Okay. And I, I like to think that what I'm doing is not capturing. I'm, I'm also a photographer and, and uh, one of the things I do is, is teach a photography workshop at a place called Esalen on the uh, Northern California, Big Sur coast. And um, one of the first things I talk about is how we look at uh, photography um, the process of photography, and in its very masculine terms, um, such as capturing and shooting and um, taking, and so you know this this and that's very that's very cultural. That's uh, culturally determined. It's it's um, conditioned um, by our culture. It's hard to think of, of of using a word that doesn't that isn't that you don't say you don't say shoot or capture. You just said it without thinking about it. So. We, you know, but we can't capture essence. You know, ultimately, we really can't capture essence. And, uh, you know, we can get close to it. And what I like to think of is in, in terms of my work, both as a photographer and a filmmaker, is that I'm not capturing something as much as I am receiving it. I'm um, actually receiving. And that is, and, and that in a way is honoring that relationship. Um, uh, the, the reciprocity that that it is it's I'm not taking from and then leaving I'm receiving and with that comes um, humility and gratitude you know I've done a lot of shows mm -hmm. and I mean three years worth is from a lot of shows this will be one of the ones I'm going to re-listen to <laughs> and one of the reasons is because and I and don't take this wrong because I'm not taking it wrong. I have been wrong so many times during this show that I'm so happy about that. I love how you're even here expanding what I thought to be true and putting it in a way that makes so much more sense to me. When you say receiving, I mean, I, and I'm touching upon what that means. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing and I'm trying to sense what that means as opposed to capture. and. So, so I want to understand that a little more because I, I, real, I believe that what you're saying, I feel what you're saying is so much better than what I said. So mm -hmm. when you say capture, when you say receiving, it's, it, there's no, it's coming through you and it's not ending there. Mm -hmm. Capturing to me, when I said it, sounds like you get it and, and you capture it and that's, that's it, it's done. But when you say receiving, there's something about a flow that I want, yes. I'd like you to expand if you can. Uh, well, I think that's a good word, is flow. And flow is sort of a, a, a feminine principle, um, as receiving is. And, uh, you know, I, I just think we, we have a very, our, our culture is, is, is a, it's a very masculine-based culture. And um, so it's, it's natural that we use those words and concepts and we think that way. It's very objectifying. Um, it's uh, you know we're 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 taking experience and trying to encapsulate it into into some, into one thing, and to try to define something, um, and again that's very that's a very masculine approach and the feminine approach would be the flow would be to receive the openness the patience the lack of structure the lack of knowing the the mystery. Um, and those qualities are really important too, and uh, and I think it's essential in the work that I do, and to keep that that openness, to keep that receptive quality, um, and to also hold, be able to hold the the the, uh, the unknown um, and the mystery that we don't know what's going to happen, that we don't know what what is really this, what is the essence, the word that you, you use, what is the essence of what we're looking at. And that the work itself is the inquiry into that. So, 
that to me is, is what's important. And it's not choosing the feminine over the masculine because they have to work together. These principles do work together and they have to. It's the yin and yang principle um, of Eastern uh, um, traditions. Um, but we have to start understanding the, and, and um, uh, embodying that feminine principle in order to, to hold both. So uh, I hope that that sort of yeah makes, oh yeah uh, and I here. yeah and I really appreciate uh, I, I appreciate what you say I appreciate how you say it I don't I'm I want to uh, watch it again because I really want to get a clear as clear a picture an understanding as I can and I and and you know and I listen to myself. Yeah. And, and I guess, and, and you know, I, I don't get a chance to talk about this very much, and that's why I thank you for, for letting me talk about it. Um, not many people, you know, it, it's, it's, it's my thing, you know, I don't hear too many documentary filmmakers or filmmakers in general talking about this. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, so it's not just the approach, but I think it also, um, it also influences the, the work itself and the way that the work is going to impact people. Because when you're approaching something with a receptivity, um, as opposed to the idea of capturing something, usually capture has has a sort of has a idea of, of something that you 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 it's it's your will that you're imposing on somebody else uh, or on something else, um, and there's this imposition of uh, of your own ideas, your own judgments, your own biases, and often that comes through, but when we're in a receptive state, an open receptive state, um, we're allowing the essence of that thing to come through um, without our preconceptions. And that's that we're, we're touching, we are, I think, then touching closer upon essence and authenticity. And I think when that authenticity when we when we're when we are able to, to touch on that authenticity in the subject that we're looking at, it dissolves the boundaries. It dissolves the the boundaries of self and other of the of the subject and object. So that that it it comes through me, it pierces through me, and then pierce, pierces through the lens of the camera through me and through the viewer ultimately. And that that authenticity is what I'm really interested in. Right. And in order to get to it, we have to let go of our preconceived notions right. and our our ideas about uh, capturing anything. Right. Yeah, really. I mean, get rid of control, and I mean, because even if you're looking for the essence, you're looking for a, an answer. You know, and there may not be an answer. You're not right. looking for that. Right. You're just right. yeah. And, and, I mean, yeah, and essence. If you know, you, yeah. I mean, this is a philosophical discussion. Yeah. Ultimately, well, that's okay. And is, I, is, you know, yeah. if you're, is essence a thing anyway? I don't, exactly. I don't think it is. So I, thank you very much. Because this is more than I even, I mean, I have no idea what we're going to talk about, obviously. I mean, you know, I'd say I have certain questions and, you know, certain things we could talk about. But I kind of wait for it to kind of happen mm -hmm. in some way, something. And this is really fabulous because you're, you're really talking beneath the surface of something that uh, you can touch. Anyway, I hope everybody out here understands what I'm talking about, because I yeah. do, but it's hard to explain it's so profound. Yeah, beneath the surface, that's a good word. The, the title of uh, the Lyme disease film is Under Our Skin. Um, you know, the, uh, the name of my company is Open Eye Pictures. So it is, that, it's that idea of seeing beyond, seeing, beyond, seeing underneath. Um, Staying open. Staying open and, and letting it evolve as it goes, not knowing where it's going to take you, just that it's something. And, and knowing that, the, I think, knowing ultimately, it's like when we say something is eye-opening, it changes our perception. We're allowed to see in a different way. Very cool. Well, I want to invite anybody out there that wants, I haven't, I've been so engrossed in listening to Andy myself that I haven't even suggested this, but if anybody would like to call in, please feel free to do that. 919-518-9773. Uh, you're welcome to uh, give us a holler on computers. That's plural, 2K voice on Skype voice. And uh, we'd love to hear you from wherever you are uh, sitting and listening and watching. And by all means, take part in our chat. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. 
you're welcome to put your name in the window and um, ask questions or um, whatever you like. We'd love to have you uh, comment back. You know, this is real. The, the reason it's so interesting is because most of the time, when you when you sit down to 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 do something, you have to have a clear picture of what it's going to look like. People very often want to dot every I, cross every T, know where they're going, who they're going to be meeting, and from what I hear with Andy, that's not. Maybe you have this idea or some some something coming to you. But it's not about knowing the whole story. Or even if there is, just just letting it happen and seeing what information comes. Oh, we have somebody, I think, right? Okay, somebody is calling us, Andy, so hold on a minute. Hello? Hi, everybody. This is Chris calling in. Hey, Hi, Chris. Andy. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Amnon. So um, I am calling in with a question, but first of all, is it okay if I ask Sure. One? Um, I definitely wanted to say a big thank you to Andy for bringing Lyme disease into the world of documentaries. Um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, and so for me growing up, Lyme disease, um, no one questioned it. Um, when you said you had Lyme disease, we all knew generally what somebody could potentially be going through. And then when I moved to a different part of the country here in the South, um, Lyme disease just was not recognized. Um, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't recognized. It was questioned. Um, people would raise their eyebrows. And I have a very dear friend who's affected by it. Actually, several friends who are affected by it. And can't thank you enough for bringing it under our skin and emergence um, into the forefront because we need to have this dialogue. And I think you are a, a very well-spoken. Um, spokesman for Lyme disease. So thank you, thank you, thank you, first of all. You're welcome. Good. That was good, Chris. Thank and you for bringing that up. No problem. Then I had a, a, a follow-up question. I was wondering, um, does Andy, Andy, do you think that you have a third Lyme disease documentary um, in the works? Do you foresee that? Or is there more to tell? I think is something that I'm kind of wondering about. Oh. Where would you like to see a third one, if you'd like even to see a third one? I know you just released the second one um, yeah, it's, late summer. Uh, uh, it, it, there might be. That's all I can say. Yes, mm -hmm. there is more. There's more to the story. Um, what we've what we've shown is really just, in, in a way, s scratching the surface. Um, there's mm -hmm. so much more. I mean, we, we filmed, for the first film, we had over 400 hours of footage. And that had to be condensed into you know, a little more than an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can see that there's a lot that we left out. And, um, and there's, a more, there's a lot more about the issue itself that, that we haven't gotten to um, for, for a number of reasons. But uh, it, so I guess I, I want to say it is possible. But um, I, I don't know yet. It, it, you know, we're 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 doing research behind the scenes, um, but and we we can't really, you know, until until we know there's a story there, until we know there's an, until we know there's there's some kind of essence there, <laughs> that can be communicated. Um, right. Then, uh, it's you know we 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 can't do that partly because it's it's a very expensive business and. Um, you know, we, we do need to know that there's something going to be on the uh, there's something on the other end there's, that there is something that we can show and share. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for being a guest today. It's a pleasure watching you. Thanks, Marilyn. Thanks, Amnon. Thanks, honey. Thanks for calling in. No problem at all. I'm going to get off the line so other people can join the conversation. All right. Bye. Bye. So you heard that. If anybody wants that. to call in, you are more than welcome to. We'd love to have you. Um, so, Andy, you know, before we know it, Tom's going to be up. And I know you've done several things about um, for the AIDS, for AIDS, which I also um, watched several of those shorts. And they were very fascinating. The different, the different, um, I guess the different, from different positions, 
different people, different stories. It was so yeah, well, I think a, another way of looking at that is, is I don't, uh, you know, usually I don't choose an issue, getting back to how I choose the films. It's not like, and with Pete, that's why it's, it's tough when people say, well, what are your films about? What's the common theme? Um, it's, you know, I never chose AIDS as a as a theme and I never really chose Lyme disease as a as a theme either it was it's really the stories around them getting back to what you said at the beginning it's it's what's happening around it that that that's interesting to me uh, and in the case of AIDS I did a film about uh, this the dancer Anna Halperin um, who worked with uh, who used dance as a way to help heal um, people with uh, HIV and AIDS um, I did a film about someone who had AIDS and, and um, his partner died and he ended up dying of AIDS um, and this was back when everybody was dying of AIDS in the late 80s and early 90s um, and the film was really about his, 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 uh, his telling of his story through his artwork, through his poetry and his art. And so that's what that was about. As much as it was, AIDS was sort of the backstory. It was in a way insignificant. Um, so uh, I also did a film about um, about um, um, brain cancer. And that was for UCSF, um, and that was about the caregiving aspect uh, of 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 the condition. So it wasn't about the condition itself. Um, so again, it has to do with the stories around it and the people around it and the human relationships around it. That's what, that's what ultimately in, interests me is how do we deal with crisis um, and how it forms community and how it fosters creativity um, and how we can heal. That's what interests me. Well, you really, you really are a master. Because <clears throat> when I listen to, this, to the story about the, um, where the gentleman read a piece of his poem, uh-huh. It was so, I mean, the words that were chosen in the poem were so unusual to describe somebody, but it was such a perfect spot to listen to because of how well it, dis it was so descriptive of what it was like in taking care of someone and the love that this person had for somebody else. You couldn't deny through the experience of this film the love, the relationship that there was. You just couldn't describe it and it was so unusual. And the same thing, the care, the caregiver, and then the Bubba story with the Jewish grandma. You could not, and I'm Jewish, so you could not describe the kind of relationship. It was fat, it, the, the, the feeling that, 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 that you got, when you talk about the backstory, that is so true because you cannot deny the feelings that come through these films and the relationships that people have together or somebody has with something. It's so, it's just amazing. I really commend you for the work you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, it must be frustrating for anybody who's listening to this to not be able to uh, know what you're talking about. It's okay, they're <laughs> going to have to go listen. And that, tell them about your website because they're going to just going to have to go listen and, and get a feel for what I'm talking about. Well, the website is openeyepictures.com. Um, and then um, the, uh, there, there's usually um, separate or often separate websites for the different films. For example, Under Our Skin, there's a, the website is underourskin.com and um, that has a lot of traffic and a lot of resources and a lot of information in itself. Yeah, and Andy brought up a good point. <laughs> I'm talking about these films and I really want you to go watch them and listen to them because if you want to know uh, about love or about any, experiencing things, feeling something inside of yourself that you might not have experienced before. I had that experience several times watching uh, th these films. I, I, something, was a, something awoke in me that was, was uh, new, new feelings, new something new and I would highly recommend I know that there's many of you that are listening that really 
will will we'll understand what I'm talking well, about. Well, that's you great talk. because yeah, then we're doing our jobs. And yeah, our you jobs are really are opening eyes. You are, and I'm about <laughs> yeah, and I love the human connection. I love relationships. I love stories. I I love having a way of telling people stories uh, that you can't tell. You can either show. You can, you know, there's all ways of telling some stories. You can't always just, I can't sit here and just tell your story. Sometimes you just have to see it, you have to experience it, whatever. You have found a way, you understand, for all the different ways of telling a story, you, you're finding those ways to tap into and to take me on that experience with you. That's what it's about. That's, that's yay. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's what, that's the, that's the, uh, I, as I was saying before, that's the essence that's, or the authenticity that's coming through, um, uh, or, or put it this way, the, the extent to which, which um, the process and the product reveals a, a authenticity, um, then the essence is able to come through. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because it's, it's what I'm trying to do. And, yeah. Um, and it's not all or nothing, you know, we, we get glimpses, that's all we can do is offer glimpses and get glimpses. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think when we release ourselves from the need to sort of capture truth or um, any, any, or capturing any, any one uh, thing in general, um, like essence, then it, it frees us to... Um, to have a real, a, a deeper and more enriching experience. Right, and it's all, and it's going to happen glimpse by glimpse. Yeah. Glimpse yeah. So maybe glimpse. they're not stories. Maybe they're glimpses. We can call yeah. them glimpses instead of stories. Yeah. <laughs> because a story has a beginning, middle, and an end. Right. Right. You know, right. conventionally, but a glimpse right. is just a sort of it's an open window. It's an an open eye, um, but then the eye closes. You know. Right. Um, and. Uh, we don't know what's next. Right, and you know, it's interesting because people want to know the, the story, the, you know, how it's going to do this, how it's going to make money, what's the whole thing, and really and truly, even when we talk about freedom, we are only showing a glimpse. Bit, that's the only way you can, I don't know, I shouldn't say the only way, but it's, it's a way that I think we use this, this platform is to show a glimpse at a time, and then the rest is up to wh whoever sees the glimpse or experiences the glimpse. You know, because I, I would guess, and you can tell me, everybody, uh, people are going to experience different things from your films. And you can't, you're not telling them what to experience. Yeah, I, ideally, I mean, we are. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, filmmaking is is also a very manipulative process. You know, we manipulate with uh, with our editorial choices, with our our uh, choices in terms of how we're filming somebody or something, um, in terms of what goes in and what doesn't go in, in terms of the music we use. So, it is highly manipulative. Um, but I I also uh, you know it, it, that's partly how my anthropological background um, works into this that that. You know, I think we need to have an awareness of that, how we are manipulating um, all the time. I mean, we can't not manipulate in a way. We can't not control because every decision, every word that we utter is, is, a, um, is, a, is, a, is a restriction um, and, is, um, and is, is both conditioned um, by our experience and also restricts experience. So it's, it's going to happen no matter what. It, it, mere yeah. fact that we use language uh, to structure our thoughts and ideas, uh, that we use images, um, is, is controlling in a way. Um, so given that, how can we um, be as, as open um, to experience as possible? And uh, that ultimately is maybe a spiritual question. And uh, that's why I'm going to uh, sit in a in a spiritual retreat for three weeks um, next month because, uh, you know, that, that uh, you, you can't do the outer work without doing the inner work. No, and something, something 
obviously something is calling to you and you, I'm imagining you're just needing to get really quiet away from the the creativity even of what you know to be able to really get beneath whatever is to get to what's calling you you know whatever piece that that message is or whatever like that and it, and it happens but you're needing some you're, you, there's something that's very important for you to hear and it's and it's 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 grateful it's wonderful i'm glad you're you're uh, for me for you i'm glad you're going to have that opportunity because you are you have a way of sharing information that is so beautiful that i i am happy you're having this opportunity so that you can come back and maybe tell us something that you know that you've heard maybe your next thing is a spiritual message of some sort and you are a messenger of that you know of that message nice that we that i that we we are all vessels right we oh, are yeah. vessels i like i like that and you know looking at it in in the photographic uh, uh, metaphor is the camera itself is a is a, is a vessel mm -hmm. and it's a vessel of light just as human beings are vessels of light um, the light goes through the lens um, and the light from within ourselves also goes through the lens in the other direction so that's the reciprocal relationship that's the mutuality and ultimately I think that's also the healing it's when those 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 two parts um, join when there's a, a dissolving of boundaries when there's a union um, coming from the duality so um, so I like that you said that word that uh, um, yes and, and to the extent that we to which we can all be vessels um, of light um, I think it'll make the world a better place there's no question there's no question and I would I would love if you're you know when you're ready I would love for you to come back and and really um, whenever you're ready whatever it looks like if you know if the time comes and it's the right time for you to come back and talk to me about this stuff because I would love to hear what you saw and how you know because I really I'm all about people's connect about connecting and listening I mean that is my thing and mm -hmm. I'm on this listening journey. Mm -hmm. And everything gives off information. Everything. We listen to everything. Pictures, sight, sound, everything. And so I'm really excited to hear whatever you've heard and however you're going to share it. So, yeah. Andy, I want to thank you for being so beautiful today, really so expressive and just thank you very much for, for sharing with me something another I don't even another another something I haven't I don't know yet another another way of seeing another yeah. way of being yeah yeah and, and thank you for um, eliciting that for me I, I, I expected to come on this show and just talk about the content of my work and um, I do that a lot, so it's nice to be able to talk about other things. It's nice to talk about the, the, um, all the, uh, all the things outside of that 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 help shape it, and that ultimately I think are, are really the most important aspects. Mm -hmm. So this is the backstory of the backstory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm going to be li listening, and I'm going to. It's the backstory, but it's really the front story. It's really the front story. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's it really is what is yeah exactly. So thank you so very much, and, and I mean we have like a minute left, so just whatever you want to share, just share. Oh, <laughs> I think I would use that use that that minute in for uh, silence and um, and let let your audiences be in that silence and. Uh, and get a glimpse of whatever's there. Um, it's hard to just fill up that time, um, but I, you know, I, 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 I want to say I'm not, I'm not used to Skype conversations or Skype interviews, and, and I'm not too, too used to being interviewed about, about some of these more esoteric ideas behind the work, and um, it, it's helping me to sort of um, 
better understanding it uh, and under understand it and um, to understand my own motivation for what I do and uh, uh, hopefully soon there might even be a book about it so stay tuned stay tuned and I'm gonna say I'm gonna ask Amnon to give us a, a, a few a, a minute a few seconds and I'm not gonna say any more either I'm gonna piggyback on what Andy said and just say let's just um, let's just listen to how we feel now and what what you got from it what what we got from it and let's let that be and just check out his work and we'll be back with some of this in in a future date I know so with that I'm gonna be quiet I'm gonna ask on to just give us another minute and let's all just be together on this With that, everyone, have a wonderful day. Andy, I'll be in touch. You're just marvelous. Thank you. And everybody out <laughs> Thank there, you. take care. Thanks for being here today. Bye. Bye-bye. to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Health In with Debbie Brook, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCBBI members, The Tanya Love Show, Your Healthy Pet with Gisela DiCarlo. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net.